Now that you've found UBN Radio and discovered our quality talk shows, it's time to spread the word to friends, family, and the universe. 24 hours of music and talk. Radio without limits. That's why people keep coming back for more. That's UBNRadio.com. Hey, everybody. It is Wednesday, September the 23rd. I'm Emerson Collins. And I'm Del Shores. And you're listening to the, the Del and Emerson Show. Street Talk. Real gay. That audience is ready to go because we got a big old show. Hey, Del Shores. Hello, Emerson Collins. Welcome back. How was your weekend of fun it was, and travels? It was amazing. I went to Columbus, Ohio, and they did a production of uh, Sorted Lives at the Evolution Theater, and it was an amazing production. Uh, they did such a good job, honored the play, and I loved seeing it. Said almost every single line correctly. Hey, you know, that's a good place to start. And uh, then I, I, w- I did a lot of bar appearances, and of course I love that because you know, I can drink. And then... Uh, then I uh, had I hosted this thing. Uh, it was just crazy drag on ice, a sorted capade. I mean, at yes, the, the local hockey rink, and I am freezing the whole time. But we had so much fun with those drag queens performing and doing, just trying to you know honor the Olympics in some twisted, fucked up way. It the was, Olympics or the ice capades? Well, it was kind of they. Some of them were claiming to be former gold medal winners. I like and, that. And, I like it. And there An was upsell. a big fight going on with a crowbar. Come, some rivals were there. Tanya Harding and Nancy Kerrigan. Yes, yes. they paid homage to Good. them. And then uh, Nina West, a great drag personality there, co-hosted with me, and we just had a great time. And you were in Vegas. Yes, were you we not? did a Vegas gaycation. Uh, Blake McC. Uh, headlined on the main stage at Vegas Pride, and the Pride people were wonderful. Uh, he killed it and had a great show, and Justin Martindale, our stand-up comedian friend, of course, went with us. So it was a gay, old Vegas time. And I figured out what my problem is with Vegas this weekend. What? It looks real gay and feels a little hate crimey. Oh, yeah. You know, well, like because, the but, juxtaposition yeah. of like the people that win radio contests from somewhere and they're walking around like no homo, but everything's like lights and fabulous and neon and shows. And so the juxtaposition, it just feels a little bit like huh, sometimes walking down the street. Well, how well, I heard that Pride was really big there, though, this year, that it was they, a much Yeah, they had a great time. Bigger and better. Well, I had never been before, so I don't have a size comparison, but the staff was wonderful. The events we went to, the big old gay pool party at the Luxor. On Sunday, uh, banana hammocks out in full effect. Uh, yes. So we had a really great time. <laughs> well, good. And good. we have really interesting, exciting, sorted update news. Yes, we do. Uh, we have been working so hard to get our movie made, and we were we we're exploring other other ways to decrease the budget and make it. And uh, and we have decided that we are going to be shooting the movie in Canada now, uh, about 15 days there, and then about three in Dallas. It saves us a tremendous amount of money. And uh, we were able to lower our investment opportunity to 12.5. That there's got to be some rich person just listening right now. We have over 20,000 people listening. Some rich person who loves sorted lives. Now, come on. We need a few more investors. But we're doing really well. We just hit over 70% capitalization. And we are really excited that we are going to be filming in April and May of next year. So it gives us to the end of the year uh, to finish raising the last third of the investment budget that we need. So if you're interested, uh, you can email us. Uh, and we have information packets about all of that, and we're super excited uh, to save some money and make the investment go further and have a really great plan uh, for shooting in the spring. Woo woo! And I'm Del Shores at me.com. If you want to pack it. Yeah, if you want to package. Um, speaking <laughs> of our 20,000 listeners, package. we were talking about this earlier, and you know, we feel so fortunate. That they just We've been doing this over a year now here at the radio show, and we appreciate so much that there are more than 20,000 of you that listen every week, over 5,000 downloads every week, so we're getting to like 120,000 listeners in a month. What we cannot figure out to do, and we're asking for your help, is how to get the social media presence of the show up. And what we mean by that is we create a graphic every week that we share out about the show, and he and I both uh, tweet about it. But we don't see a lot of interaction engagement uh, from you listeners on social media. And the reason it's important is we love doing the show. It is my favorite hour of the week. And we need to continue to grow our listener base because we need to get sponsors for the show to make it an affordable thing for us to keep doing. We love chatting uh, for you guys. And... So so if you have ideas, Dell and I are both posting on our Facebook pages. It goes on our pages in about 10 minutes uh, with questions, thoughts. What do you think we can do to do after show discussions or to make uh, to give you guys 
opportunities to tweet about it in order to up the social media engagement. So we have been banging our heads against the wall and figured there's 20,000 of y'all. There's got to be a couple good and, ideas out there. And there. There are some who do. I mean, we've got Scott Fullerton, who has a terrific podcast himself uh, called uh, Left of Straight that I did his podcast recently, and he has just been so good to us. So, hey, hey do what Scott does. Tweet, tweet, post. Um, but so uh, after the show, I mean, or right now, if you're sitting at your computer watching the show, uh, you can go to either Dell's Facebook page at Dell Shores Fan Club or mine at Emerson Collins Official and find that post um, and share your ideas with us. Uh, we want to continue to grow the show. We love doing it. Um, and any creativity you have, we will be happy to take advantage of. Yeah, and if you if you want to advertise with us, we're, we've got reasonable rates. We don't. We're, we, this is not something where we, I mean, we'd love to make some money, but we, we'd like to just pay for our broadcast yeah, every week. Yeah, we'd like it to just stop costing us money. <laughs> there we go. Basically. So, All right, so okay, that's the end of our quality giant quality commercial. Update. Um, super quick, because it feels like it was 100 years ago now in pop culture, but the GOP debate last week had actually uh, not a lot of discussion, particularly of LGBT issues beyond the standard, the kids, the JV kids table debate, Rick Santorum, of course, went off about the bakers and the florists. Bobby Jindal was all upset that we're discriminating against Christians. George Pataki was one of the only ones that had a reasonable thing to say about Kim Davis, saying, I think she should have been fired, and if she worked for me, I would have. Mike Huckabee continues to carry Kim Davis as his own personal cross. Uh, <laughs> I'd love to see that. <clears throat> carrying I'd like her, her up that hill. I would just like to see him carry her up a hill. Continuing, he is the Simon, and, Simon of Cyrene of the... <laughs> <laughs> you just love that. I love that. It's so <laughs> stupid. It makes me laugh. Um, and Jeb Bush sort of tried to walk down the middle in the big kids debate saying we should respect the rule of law. I was opposed to the decision, but we can't just say gays can't get married now. But there should be some accommodation for her conscience, just as there should be for people who are florists who don't want to participate in weddings or bakers. He, so he, he basically just like just got on top of that fence and just walked on and, both sides. And you know what? The bad <laughs> thing about riding a fence is it's not good for your taint. No, it, that's painful. And you can. You can scratch a ball. You'll or, rub or, that taint or, raw, yeah. straddling a fence that way for very long. So he, he really messed up, though. He, 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 with that Margaret Thatcher on the ten dollar bill. Don't nobody care about that. I, well, nobody cares about who who cares about anybody being on. It was a stupid question. Um, well, I think the idea was to show some like personality. I found it misogynistic personally, but. Uh, uh, I would put you on it, Emerson. <laughs> as, as the first woman on. Thank you. Thank you. I am Emerson. New series coming to E. Um, all right. Traveling on in our quality update, uh, just because it's important to pay attention to our LGBT community around the world. Nepal has written a brand new constitution and became only the third country in the world to include LGBT protections in their constitution, Yay. stating that sexual and gender minorities cannot be discriminated against by state or judiciary. Only South Africa and Ecuador have similar things in their constitution. I couldn't find the word I was looking you, you, for. You just I became like, like a stutter and changed the word. <laughs> I was like, no, I just whatever the word was. Provision is where <laughs> I was there. headed and just didn't get there. Welcome to my day on a every day. Daily basis. It's just, I'm just, what was that word and who was that person? You know. <laughs> yes. All right. Well, we got to dive into her. Uh, Tell us about Kim Davis. Well, you know, she went on uh, uh, Good Morning America, and uh, yeah, Paula Ferris interviewed her. Yes. Who, who I loved just watching Paula Ferris just look at her like with d sort of disdain. It was well, like, oh, I don't like you. I felt like she was trying to do that thing where she was like, I'm trying to look at you sympathetically so you'll keep talking, but I'm uh, having a hard time keeping my face this way. Yeah, she she did a good job, though. Well, and, and what, in, in fact, instead of, let's, in, let's just reenact it. Yes, we because you know, I, I love to play. I'm not bringing in the dress anymore, but I love playing her. So you be Paula Ferris, and I will be Kim Davis. Give me a second just to get into character. Let me find some bigotry. Create the oh, reality. The b bigotry. Mm -hmm. I, I'm feeling homely. And, get your given and a circumstances. Heavy, a little fleshy. Okay, here we go. Um, I have never once spouted a word of hate. I am not being hateful. I'm just a normal person that has been touched by the grace of God and his mercy. I haven't always been a good person when I didn't live for God. I didn't live for him. I was real good at living for the devil. Mm -hmm. Who do you consider your boss? Is your boss God, your constituents, or the federal government? Well, my constituents elected, but the main authority that rules my life is the Lord. Why would you want to remain in this position? I'm good at my job. I have friends who are gay and lesbians. Really? They, oh, they, they know. They know where 
I stand, and we don't agree on this issue, and we're okay because we respect each other. <laughs> I've been called Hitler. I've been called a hypocrite. I've been called a homophobe. What hurts me most is the worst. It's the worst is that my God does not love me or that my God is not happy with me and that I am a hypocrite of a Christian. In your mind, are they still valid? They are not valid in God's eyes. I have given no authority to write a marriage license. They did not have my permission. Why is your moral conscience more important than someone else's happiness? I don't think dignity is guaranteed in the Constitution. I think dignity is something you find within yourself. I feel sad that someone could be so unhappy with themselves as a person that they did not feel dignified as a human being until they got a piece of paper. There's just so much more to life than that. And scene. That last sentence just disturbs me on so many levels. Well, here's my problem in watching it, and this interview confirmed everything that I thought. Like, she, uh, once again, she is not the brightest bulb no. in the Kentucky no. No, chandelier. No. And, uh, and, and, and not that I feel sorry for her, but she's so dumb that I genuinely feel that whatever she's been taught, warped about her particular faith by the people who have taught it to her, I genuinely think she is worried if she does this, it will affect her salvation. I think that she has been used and abused by the people that are putting her, that are driving her through this to be this sort of martyr symbol. I genuinely feel, like, because when she, I don't think, she, I mean, they're big tears, but her trail of tears, I do think is genuine. I don't think it's crocodile tears. I think she feels bad. Every time she, she talks like about the Lord, I well, I watched it to try to prepare for this. I good, wanted good. to know it was a very Meryl Streep Background. moment mm -hmm. for me. Um, and I, I, yes, I agree with you. It was, it was not acting. It was real. And but it's though she's not smart enough to see the hypocrisy of saying it's just a piece of paper. Well, if it's just a piece of paper. Give it to him. Yeah. And then this last thing about dignity and that you know it, 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 that, that you're not. And, and how, who are they? Who is she to say that they are sad, unhappy people? Fuck her. I'm well, sorry. Well, I'm sitting. Well, we're sitting here saying. She's a sad, unhappy person. Well, Everybody gets to say that. I didn't that. say she was unhappy. I think that she's probably, she feels very much happy in her Christianity. Right. But, I, you know, and they, they did call her out on the, the hypocrisy, and she said, no, I've been wiped clean. I've been wiped clean. She said that. Yes. I'm just saying, if we get to sit here and say all of our opinions about her, she does get to say what she thinks well, of the people of course who are she coming does. to her And office. then I can say my opinion about what she said, her opinion about that. I, I, it's just a big, vicious circle. But let's just, let's just call it. it when, when the book is written, it will be as told to. It will have a credit of somebody well, else. Well, I just want the <laughs> Lifetime movie to be starring that Mama June from Honey Boo Boo. Or in her acting debut and introducing Mama June as Kim Davis. <laughs> <laughs> That's the movie I want to see. I would go. I would give it all of my money. All right. And then one other really silly fun thing. Uh, there's a hashtag that was started called Kisses for Kim with lots of uh, straight bros supposedly uh, giving each other kisses to show her that contrary to her deeply held religious beliefs, same-sex loving is A-OK. -okay. So if you want to enjoy some amusing... Uh, Homo, bromo, and no homo uh, man man kisses. Check out the hashtag kisses for Kim on the Twitter. It's sort of cute. And if you can't find anybody to kiss, just, you know, if you see me on the street, just come over and kiss. We'll do a selfie. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Dale Shore's giving out free kisses. Yeah. Like a kissing booth at yeah, a carnival. Yeah, take taking it for the team, Emerson. There that's, you go. That's what, what it's called. Okay. I'm going I'm <laughs> to leave, leave that one right there. And let's flash through the gay news. All right. In more important and fun uh, news, the Emmys were on Sunday night. What do you think, Dale Shores? Well, okay. I, I, I have to admit, I had a gentleman caller during the Emmys that watched them with that's me. More so important. he got a little you bit a little distracted busy. at times. You went for but, the Netflix and yeah, chill. I was in Columbus, Ohio. It was a fun night for me watching the Emmys. I but I did see a lot of them. I, I loved. Um, it made me want to see Olive Kittredge. I'll tell you that. It did not make me. It want did not. To. No, we read about it online. It's about some cranky woman in Maine. But that's can, like the story. Can we just please get Frances to get someone to help her to come well, to these awards? She does not have to play a character in life. Well, I want a movie with Emma Thompson and Frances McDormand playing sisters, where Emma Thompson is like the witty, charming one, and Frances is the angry one, and they could just win all the awards for everything. They could just stare at each other for two hours, and I would watch that. But she just—I think that's a remake of Baby Jane. I don't know <laughs> what happened that made her. She was so irritated when she got up there. But I have an idea because she had that little man bun, woman bun in the back. It, I feel like she had a salt and pepper Ariana Grande ponytail on at first, and <laughs> someone had yanked it off. And she was like, "Where'd my ponytail go? Oh, I've got to win an award." That, 
I don't know. I don't know. In that outfit. Bless her heart. She bless her heart. I love her, though. She is a, a fabulous actress. I love Viola Davis's speech. Yes. I, it, 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 it got to me. Uh, what, and, are, what are other highlights? Well, but and that was uh, genuinely uh, a truly important moment. And I want to say something uh, that I observed about it, too. Uh, what I loved not only was what she said. I mean, not only uh, like she should be able to win an Emmy Award for her speech at the Emmys because it was on television. So best performance in an award show goes oh, to Viola <laughs> Davis. Um, That's next. <laughs> but the, the degree to which she articulated the history and the momentum and the importance of the moment that at the same time as we celebrate the first African American actress to win Best Actress in a Drama, it's also frustrating because you know it seems like we should be past this kind of first. Yeah. You know what I mean? I was shocked that it was the first. Um, and, but also in addition to that, it's something because we've it's related to an issue we've talked about on our show. Watching Taraji P Henson leap to her feet and the cutaways to Carrie Washington and these women all sharing in this experience together, this sort of support of our our whole community rising through mm -hmm. the recognition you are receiving right now. It's something that I have watched. And women of color do it really well. And it's something, uh, again, that we've talked about. I just don't feel like particularly gay men do well band together and support each other and stand for each other and applaud each other's successes in the way that these women uh, so often do in the list of actresses that, that, that Viola said from the stage. I thought it was just sort of an important uh, demonstration of what it can look like when a community continues to, to celebrate shining together. Um, but I feel like sometimes we are guilty of not doing as well. And I have to say, Emerson, you called that Emmy the moment that night that she had you, the, when we talked about her on this show. Oh, yes. You said she will win the Emmy yes. just for that for one those scene. nine words, taking her whole face off and then saying, "Why is your penis on a dead girl's phone?" I was like, "Give her, give it to her." And this season, because it starts, you know, tomorrow night, I want them to get rid of that trophy they've been using on How to Get Away with Murder and just pass Viola Davis's Emmy around. Oh, I, speaking of, I did love uh, Ricky with uh, posing with holding for the, his holding Emmy. him, knowing that he was not going to win. Yes, <laughs> that was great. I thought Andy did a competent job. I thought the opening video was hysterical. It was great. That is his genius, and like a lame is reference, and that thing of like it's so hard to watch all the shows on television you're supposed to watch. I, I watch too much television and call it research for the people's couch. Uh, but I thought that was really great and funny, and I love that it felt like they got it more right this time. That they recognized some new winners and some really exciting. things things and I just, I just enjoyed it. I did too. I All did right. too. And and, and, and crazy um what's her, what's her name from Orange is the Uzo New Black? Aduba. Yeah, who won uh last Who's now won a comedy and drama award that for was the what same I mean. It was I, like I want to okay, I want to say something slightly controversial about her. I think she's fantastic. I don't think that she is so far and away so much better than the other women in that show I'm so that it scared should for always us. be a landslide in her favor. No, I'm not taking no, away. No, no, I agree with you. That's why I said I'm scared for us because I so agree. I don't think that she had the season that she had the year before. I think that the season before, yes. This season, I was like, okay, there. come on. Kate Mulgrew, who it, d does consistent, consistently great. Why isn't Taylor? Sh why, why isn't Taylor ever well, nominated? It's always different why? because she's the lead, and so that's harder. But she's but I, amazing. I, so I'm not trying to take anything away from her. I just think that the all of the women are so fantastic. It's interesting that she keeps getting singled out, and particularly having already won. That right. not only did she once again get the acclaim and win. I just think it's interesting, and I love that she. No, I, I love her speech. I love her. Well, I Don't think that's part of it too. She's a shining example she of what a wonderful actor actress and human being combination can be that that comment she made about all of the people in her life who let her be her you know that didn't force her to fit anything else and the fact that, and she's also inspirational in that she almost gave up on a dream like a day before she got this she had given herself this time limit and said i am not going to go on any more auditions that was the last one and then she gets the call back and gets the role that changes her life forever exactly so all right well, that was that. Flashing on. Um, in continuing to focus on remembering that our show is about the LGBT news, and that includes all of the letters, this week is uh, Bi Week, which is a week-long national campaign from September 20th to 26th that draws attention to the stories, challenges, and public policy concerns facing bisexual, pansexual, fluid, and queer people. And it's very important because we often uh, the, forget to discuss and to notice and acknowledge uh, the bisexual part of our community there's been a lot of discussion across social media this week about how many of them uh, can 
sometimes feel a pressure to pass uh, as heterosexual if they're in an opposite sex relationship or that they are labeled as gay if they are in a same sex uh, relationship. And I think it's incumbent, particularly on those of us that are in the definitively homosexual part of the community, uh, to remember to celebrate and acknowledge the identity of the our bisexual brothers and sisters. Um, actress Evan Rachel Wood kicked off the week and she shared a long series of stories in her tweets about the shame that she felt about not feeling either straight enough or gay enough, gay enough, and the uh, shame that she felt with uh, sort of the by shaming. And so I think it's really important that we recognize and acknowledge that small jokes that we make at the expense of bisexuals um, within our community should not uh, be acceptable. Um, and so this week, if you want more information, you can visit bisexualweek.com. It's got a nice, great list of bisexual events happening across the country. You know what? And I, I have to admit something, I, and, I, I, and I realize something about this, this whole subject. I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that m most of us at some point defined ourselves as bi in our transition to be gay. And so when we see somebody that is, 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 claims to be bi, we go, oh, that's where I was at one point. And I, yeah, sure, sure, it's a gateway to gay or whatever. And we can't define people by us. Yes. Not all the time. There are genuinely bi people. And dismiss, and they're actually a far greater number than anyone uh, often is willing to realize and acknowledge because of that sort of dismissal within the community and the lack of understanding outside of it. So, uh, celebrating bisexuals. So, yay, bisexuals. Um, and if you want to check out uh, a writer that I follow that I get a lot of uh, bisexual related news and awareness from, is called, is named Eliel Cruz, E L I E L C R U Z. Uh, that's a great uh, resource for uh, bisexual news and events. Um, and not related to Ted, we hope. He is not. Okay. He is Good. definitively not. Good. All right, flashing on. All right, well, this is a crazy story. North Carolina, and I'm going there. I will be in North Carolina on stage with Leslie Jordan and Caroline Ray on Saturday night in Charlotte, but in close by in Fayetteville, North Carolina, Dustin Baker and his visiting boyfriend, Andrew Darris, went to Louie's Sports Pub. Listen to that, Louie's Sports Pub. Uh, what Darris described as a minor peck from Baker prompted bar owner Pam Griffin to approach the couple and ask them to move apart. She said, you don't need to be doing that. You're making people uncomfortable. So Darris planted a big kiss on Baker, something I would so do. Yes, <laughs> I it love is. that he it's did true. this in front of Griffin. And that's when she flipped her lid and made it clear that they were no longer welcome. Bar in owner Griffin said, I tried to be as nice as I could. This is a straight bar. I don't mind who comes in, white, black, mixed, Chinese. I love that she included the Chinese. Just, you know. Everybody's welcome, but you have to respect the kind of place you're in. Now she claims that she's getting threats on social media. Oh, really? Why? Why, Pam? Why? Her Yelp page now says, now this is what I like. They have taken a different approach to yelping her. They have give, A lot of homos yes. are giving her five stars, but they're writing things like this. This is the best gay bar in town. Hot, steamy, man love, never got any hotter all night long. I wore my my best assless chaps and the owner bought me drinks all night long. And then you wouldn't think a sports bar in Fayetteville, North Carolina would like look like the set of cruising, but it does. So she's getting all these five star ratings for being a homophobe and there a lot of people, if they really read these, they're going to be very disappointed when they, when they show up, find a bigot Pam. And then, and you know what? I, I read further on this story. She's actually saying that she did the same thing to a straight couple recently. She just doesn't like public display of affection, but she's made that comment way after all of this hit the, you know, when shit hit the fan. I mean, I don't mean, I'm not calling her a liar, but that sounds real convenient. I, I am. I think she's a liar. I, 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 I'm judging her. I'm judging her. The, um, I, I, I feel like some heterosexual pecs have probably happened without remonstration. I, I suspect there has been tongue that's been okay oh. in that bar. I'm oh. just saying. Well, there you go. And speaking of Cruz, you yes, have a little story for cruising. us for Ted Cruz. Um, Ted Cruz was on Stephen Colbert this week, and I don't know how many of you have been watching his show, but I really, really enjoy both his intelligence and his approach to humor and his new uh, dive into late night has definitely been newsworthy a number of times. Um, and he uh, was he opened a show with Jeb Bush on the first episode, and he just had Ted Cruz on, and they got into a conversation about uh, Ted Cruz's principles. And Stephen walked the line very nicely. Ted Cruz said, what I am fighting for are simple principles. Live within our means. Stop bankrupting our kids and grandkids. Follow the Constitution. And Stephen added, and no gay marriage. 
And there was a sort of pause, and he was like, and no gay marriage. And Ted said, no, actually, let's be precise. Under the Constitution, marriage is a question for the state. Stephen said, it doesn't mention marriage in the Constitution, to applause. And Ted said, that's exactly why it's a question for the states. Everything that is not mentioned is left to the states. So if you want to change the marriage laws, I believe in democracy, and I don't think. And at this point, he was booed by the uh, obviously and probably liberal audience. And Stephen turned to them and said, guys, guys, however you feel, he's my guest. Please don't boo him. And Ted finished saying, I don't think we should entrust governing our society to five unelected lawyers in Washington to say we're going to decide the rules that govern you. If you want to win an issue, go to the ballot box and win at the ballot box. That's the way the Constitution was designed. So I thought it was impressive, one, that Steve is a late night host, is managing to have actual policy discussions with politicians. Jimmy Fallon had Carly Fiorina on the other night, and he seemed so nervous at being in politics and not entertainment. He could barely finish sentences. And this is, I think, where Steve is really going to shine in a Steven. I said Steve like I know him where Steven is really going to shine in the uh, in the late night uh, crowd and it was really impressive but also that he called for decorum because Mm -hmm. that is the thing that I often talk about that we do have to be able to discuss disagreements without devolving into like mob mentality no matter how high our passions are in the discussion so I found it really impressive so I just love that he said if you want to win at the uh, go to the ballot box and win at the ballot box which he is not going to do yeah except that that's not true because that's one of the big things of like you shouldn't be able to vote on people's civil rights no that's part of I agree with you. I'm just saying his quote. Oh, well, yes. He he is not going to win. Well, I love Steve. I love Steve so much that he is now the voice on my ways. Oh, nice. (laughs) And he goes, you have reached your destination, which is surprising because I wasn't even paying attention. That's amazing. (laughs) After a while, it gets old. (laughs) <laughs> but, but at first, thin. it's really funny. <laughs> okay, so we have a Christian couple that warned a gay waiter about his future. So Britton Weaver of uh, Boise, uh, Idaho, waited on a polite middle-aged couple on the bill. They signed it as straight, and then they left a pamphlet, which I think John has that pamphlet. It says, what you miss by being a Christian with the headline, hell. Okay. Subtle. I like that. Yeah. But... They, they they did leave a 21% tip, so usually they don't leave tips, these, these bigots, but they, they actually left 21% just to say, hey, I'm a generous bigot. I am a generous bigot, and I'm going to judge you. Well, this is, what's a, what I find interesting about this from growing up in the church is my irritation at this sort of like the Roman way and the like tract handing out concept is that... That doesn't work. No. You know, whatever your religious philosophy is, the original and the way I was taught is that you live your life according to your beliefs as an example and a witness and that people should be drawn to the joy that you are given as a result of that. And then you share that once you build a personal relationship. I just don't know when in the history of ever it has worked to walk up to someone and say, you're going to hell, do you want to not? But, and then be like, yes, please tell me more. But I, I just want to know how this, uh, how they made this judgment because, you know, we had the story about no gaydar, that it doesn't really exist. Did he say, hi, I'm Britain, I'm a homosexual, and I will be your waiter for today? I, I mean, mean how, I, I do introductions that way. Hello, I'm Emerson, and I'm super gay. So maybe he did. Maybe it's part of his story. What's that, uh, that great story Leslie Jordan talks about where he was worried about uh, that he was going to some very straight uh, meeting and he was worried about walking up. Uh, no, he's worried about uh, speaking and they'll know he's gay. And his sponsor goes, well, honey, you're going to have to walk up to the podium. Yes. <laughs> <clears throat> All right. Um, flashing on. This story is actually uh, is uh, sort of horrifying. Um, Martin Shkreli is a former hedge fund manager, a 32-year-old, turned pharmaceutical businessman, and he purchased the rights recently to a 62-year-old drug that is used for treating a very specific life-threatening parasitic infection, uh, specifically uh, that impacts uh, AIDS patients and certain cancer patients. And the price of the drug for a single pill overnight went from $13.50 per tablet to $750. It is an over 5,000% increase. Now, the internet has torn him apart for the last 48 hours. Oh, they hours. call him the, the most hated man in America right now. <clears throat> um, but interesting, when you dig deeper into the, uh, into the story, is this isn't specific to him, and he isn't the first person to do it. One, this is a drug that's not used super often. I think they said there were 12,000 cases of needing the prescription uh, for the last year, and the numbers uh, continue to drop. And so there are often cases where big pharmaceutical companies will buy older drugs that are either now generics or they're not specifically used very often, and then jack up the prices in order to use that money to, they say, fund other research or to fund better treatment plans for that particular thing. Um, Because... 
people have been horrified by this particular story, but it's actually very common. It's a big problem in the prescription drug world. And this uh, price raise actually limits the ability of hospitals to keep it on hand because it's too expensive to just have it in the hospital. So when someone needs it, then they have to put in an order and have it flown in or whatever. So he did say today that he will drop the price back down. I think he has been overwhelmed by the uh, pressure of being called the worst person in the world on the Internet. Um, but it's important that we sort of stay aware of this and how big pharmaceutical uh pricing impacts sort of all of us and particularly diseases that aren't common and hopefully this will raise it as an issue in the uh, debates for both the Democrats and the Republicans as a part of how our healthcare system works. Well, he was he, he's 32 years old and he was claiming that, you know, he barely can stay in business and that's the reason he raised it, blah, blah, blah. So uh, he, he very much defended that, but he didn't, he didn't say what the new price was. No, just so it'll go down. Well, probably down. enough to get it out of the news cycle and then move on because but, let, let's be honest, in modern news in two days we'll forget what who, his name I, w I, met, I went to hate tweet him this morning after you sent me this story and uh, he had closed his his Twitter to yes he made it private private last night so I requested um, to follow him you might but, be waiting a little while but I don't I don't know that I'm going to get in I'm well, not going to get into the Martin we'll uh, keep y'all posted circle. on Dell's hate <laughs> tweets at Martin alright flashing on well I hate tweeted Chuck Woolery Last the other night, because he he was on The Voice. His son was auditioning for The Voice, and he said horrible, horrible things, horrible things about the gay community, and and blacks a few months ago. And so I just thought, oh, I just was reminded of what a horrible bigot you are. As I saw you on The Voice tonight, so I wanted to say, hey, girl, hey. So I, it's fun. Sometimes it's just fun to just send out a little hate tweet. I don't. Uh -huh. I never hear back. I, they don't retweet me or favor me, uh, but S Scott Fullerton does. <laughs> So, thank you, Scott. All right, Rainbow Doritos. Did anybody get a Rainbow Dorito? They because they're already out. They're out, and they were in Dallas for Gay Pride. There's nothing bolder than being yourself is the tagline on a new campaign launched by Doritos in which the company boldly colored orange tortilla chips that have been dyed rainbow in support of LGBT youth. To get a bag, simply donate at least $10 to the It Gets Better project. Uh, with each donation, the PepsiCo-owned food Food company Frito Lay will ship you one bag of Dorito Rainbow Chips from its limited supply. I guess you should just keep them because for ten dollars you just put them on a shelf. And I'm worried about all those colors and all those dyes. Oh, it's not any different than all the rest of the crap that everybody else eats. It's that, not like that orange that, color that on the normal. You eat Emerson. Yes. I eat a lot more well, healthy. I know, than but you. if you don't eat Doritos in the first place, then what difference does it make? Well, sometimes I like a little nacho flavor. Doritos. Well, that orange color on those nacho flavor one that ain't natural either. Okay, all right. So whether it's red, green, purple, or that orange color that's not, I know, but it's that just per, as it's, fake. Okay, all right. Well, I I may order them just to. Put them in support. Um, They're already or, out. Or I may, no, well, it, say, it says you have to order them for $10. I well, know, but I am telling you, like, that, that's, that since this, like, since it started, there are no, no more available. You mean I can't, I bet you I could go on eBay and get go one. Go see. Like, people going to be selling Rainbow Doritos. Jacking hundreds them up. of dollars on eBay. It's going to be like Martin. They're going to jack up the price. Um, but so, of course, everyone on the conservative internet lost their minds and their response tweets were hilarious. Yes. They, um, they called for boycotts. They were insults to Dan Savage. They blew up Facebook and Twitter. Tweet, hey, Frito-Lay, how insufferably stupid are you? Gay chips. I send my kids to school with your products. Am I going to have to cease now? Now, you know what? Gay chips are just chips that are only attracted to other chips. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> it's gay chips. These people. These people. Well, first of all, I just want to say, if you're sending, there are healthier options. I love you, Frito-Lay, but there are healthier options to put in your kid's bag of food. There's some carrot sticks. And then there was a tweet. It goes, I mean, why does this even exist? Doritos were fine the way they were. I don't need a special fag edition to enjoy it. And you know what's great? You don't have to buy the special fag edition. Those regular ones aren't going off the shelves. And I don't see them order them for ten, ordering them for $10. And then another one, Boycott Doritos and all they stand for. Who needs rainbow Doritos? We Christians have rights. We are being persecuted by making by a bag of chips. By a bag of chips. They're being persecuted, John, because they made rainbow Doritos. As Kim Davis said, dignity is not di not it's just, required by the Constitution. So that bag of chips, I'm just picturing this giant bag of rainbow Doritos like chasing somebody down the street. <laughs> that, you, like that, streamers that. and like explo like an exploding Dorito rainbow Dorito cannon. And then what's next? A tweet said, rainbow Cheerios? 
Maybe the Doritos fag bags come with a toy dildo. They could charge more than $10 if that was Because that's all we do. We sit at home with dildos and, and butt plugs. That's all we do. Also, uh, um, all dildos are toys. Is it... And like straight people aren't using dildos. I'm just saying, like that's redundant. If they put dildos in bags of Doritos, straights would be buying them, and and they could charge a lot, a lot more than ten dollars for that. And not just the females. Also, I'm just saying. I know they meant it sort of a derogatory, but I find fag bags hilarious. I, think, I feel like that. That's what they should have called them. Get your Dorito fag bag. I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna create a line of uh, of merces called the fag bag. And also, don't they know that like <laughs> rainbow Cheerios have been around for a long time? They're called Fruit Loops. <laughs> like, that's not new. I just, I, you know, I'm just fascinated by how these Christians are being persecuted. I think we should take a moment and pray for them. They are just going through so much. Well, you can do we that. We have caused We're, this. We don't have We've time here this. for you to pray. We've caused this, Emerson. All right, okay. flashing on. Super genuinely um, exciting uh, progress related to LGBT people in the military. President Obama this past week nominated Eric Fanning as Army Secretary, making him the first out gay man to be considered for a top military position within the Department of Defense. Fanning brings a depth of experience and tremendous dedication, Obama said of Fanning and a number of other appointees in a statement on Friday. The nominations comes after efforts by the administration aimed at strengthening the rights of LGBT inv individuals in the military, including the repeal of Don't Ask, Don't Tell. Now, of course... Once again, crazy conservatives lost their mind, and I'm going to perform this particular monologue because it was amazing. First of all, the man's name is Ted Shubat. Not a good name. That bat shit. Uh, it's I guess. not Ted a good name. Ted Shubat shit. Uh, he is a columnist for Barbed Wire, and he just got real upset and said the following. <laughs> In 2010, Obama got rid of Don't Ask, Don't Tell, which basically means fags can be out in the open in their flaming fag ways, regardless of the fact that they are decreasing the morale of fellow soldiers. Doesn't matter, they can be flaming homos right there in the U.S. military. They can be sodomizing each other right there in the military barracks. This Fanning guy, we should nickname him Eric Flaming for Flaming Fag. Or you can name him Eric Faggot. The word Fanning just fits that sort of derogatory... Well, it's not derogatory, it just fits that sort of insulting nickname. That's my favorite part. It's not derogatory, it's just sort of accurate. I was like, well, that's kind of true, it's just sort of accurate. So Eric Flaming Fag has been nominated by Hussein, the Muslim, Islamic president, the pro-fag, pro-sodomy, anti-family, anti-Christ president. I'm confused by that last part because I don't know that he's a, if he means he's against Jesus or he's the actual Antichrist. I wanted to ask him, but then I got bored. He's anti. Well, I think he's a Christian. I feel like he's he's rep. This is what I say to people like this: Jesus must just be looking down, just horrified at <laughs> you representing his name. This is. But, I mean, and, and you. By the way, you can tweet him. I looked it up. Go go tweet him, everybody. All twenty thousand of you right it. now. I just enjoy it. how much time he spent picturing how the gays in the military are going to work. Like he, he, had he some went fantasies. all the way to picturing like sodomizing each other in the military barracks. So that's really specific. And B, no, they cannot. Like that's still. Do you think not he got actually allowed a little aroused when he started? I mean, talking. I feel like he might have been yanking it underneath the table while making this video. Like yeah. it was one of those like our show. Like you can only see from the waist up. He might have been pants off, dance off, having Thus a good the time. The ellipses all over the place. No, that's where I cut. That's <laughs> oh, where I cut out oh, stuff cut. I didn't like. Oh, I see. So it didn't take the whole show to well, do. Well, I think Emerson that I would like to film that performance and put it on your actor's reel. I think it's it was really. Quite I, I feel like so many job opportunities out of that. All right, all right on. In, in uh, Atlanta, we have a rainbow. Sidewalks. There, we reported on a few weeks ago. They're now in limbo uh, for over a year. Robert Sepulveda Jr. has been working to fund and get approved rainbow crossworks in Atlanta, the city of Atlanta, just weeks after approving the permanent permanent notice installation of rainbow crosswalks at a high-profile midtown intersection, which is the gay part of town. Changed course and is now ordering the crosswalks walks scrubbed from the streets shortly after Pride. He said, "I wish the city." could have told us this issue over a year ago when the first proposal was sent to them and not a few weeks before the installation date. The city said, we have multiple requests for artworks on city streets and need to work on a more permanent policy to manage in terms of public safety in the future in which 
Time DPW will be happy to work with you on a permanent facility for this location. I don't understand what that statement is. It means that they get lots of requests for people to put artwork in the streets and they don't have like a permanent long, like I feel like they're, what they're saying is we usually just say no to all of this. And so we need to work out what's a permanent plan. I think but what I really it's... happened is they got a lot of letters from people saying this is a horrible idea and we don't like it. That's what I think. Well, I mean, if that were the case, if it were just that, they could have just said no to the whole thing. I mean, they've been applying for it for a year. Yes, but the press it didn't ha the press didn't leak until a few weeks ago that's when this all came about you see what I mean? Well, I mean, I, 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 they approved it, yes, but until recently did we all find out that rainbow sidewalks were going to be in Atlanta, and that's uh, that they made the decision to, you know, rescind their original decision of a permanent one at that intersection after the pre it hit the press. Okay, I mean that's what my theory is. I mean, we may be both wrong. Well, I, I just feel like I just know it's frustrating for them because they raised all the money outside and he has yeah. been working on it for a year and it was known early on. Like he'd been raising the money for all of this. Right. For a really long time. So the, uh, hopefully they will figure out a resolution and be able to join cities I... like West Hollywood and having a permanent installation. But if not, they've got it for pride. And that's super really exciting. Yeah, it's, it is exciting. Um, all right. We got to uh, crank along. Um, but this is important. Uh, a man, a Boston man, is uh, claiming that he was essentially slut shamed by his insurance provider when he was denied coverage after revealing that he takes Truvada as a preventative measure uh, for HIV. He filed a complaint against Mutual of Omaha. Uh, alleging that he was shocked. He was. that He said, I thought maybe they misunderstood me. I'm HIV negative. I'm not positive. I was taking Truvada as a prophylactic. But when he tried explaining this, the company still said no. He received a letter that said, we do not offer coverage to anyone who takes the medication Truvada, regardless of whether it is prescribed to treat HIV infection or used for pre-exposure prophylaxis. So they have not responded, but this is a horrifying thing because this drug is uh, a really important advancement um, in the ability of each uh, people to control uh, what they are exposed to and to have a definitive plan for their safety. Save them a sex. lot of money in the future. That is, uh, that is what it should be doing. So uh, certainly, hopefully, this story will continue to get coverage because Truvada is a great addition, uh, particularly for our community, uh, for people yes. who want to be proactively in control of uh, their safer sex uh, behaviors. And an, uplift an uplifting story. Uh, vets marry at Veterans Home. The Veterans Home of Chula Vista made history. That's here in California on Thursday when it hosted its first same-sex wedding wedding ceremony, so we want to congratulate 95-year-old World War II veteran John Banvard. He married his boyfriend, who is 67 years old, who is a Vietnam veteran, Gerald Nadeau, at the uh, senior living facility where they had lived for the last three years. And they've been I'm... together for 20 years, and they decided to get married after the Supreme Court decision. So it's a, a beautiful picture. I saw their wedding pictures, loved them. And I love that, and I love that they live at a veteran's home, and that also that they fought in two different wars and have been together for 20 years. I mean, that's just such a great, uh, wonderful story. Apparently, there was a little bit of controversy in the home and the and the uh, manager of the institution said, "This these are the people who are a part of our community and you don't have to like it. This is legal and this is what they get to do and we are happy to host the ceremony for them, Yay. which is awesome. Yay. Um, and then, just go to Scotland. Okay, we had a Scotland Street performer who drowned out a pastor. Go to the YouTube. We've got the link in the, the chat room. There's a YouTube video of a, homopho a homophobic person preacher ranting in St. Andrews in Scotland with a megaphone claiming same-sex marriage is ruining the country's economy. Then moments later, a young street performer just began blasting Scotland the Brave on his bagpipes. It's fantastic. And everybody in the crowd just started cheering for him. So the preacher gave up. And as the video title suggests, the bagpiper wins the battle in the most Scottish way possible. It's Loved just it. so hysterical. It's like rampant stereotype, like Scottish bagpipes playing the like one song that everyone knows and has heard on the bagpipes to just drown out this homophobe. It's so great. It's great. And then in trans cetera news, we're very excited. The two of us are big fans of the I Am Kate series and it just got picked up for a second season. Yes, and I genuinely hope that they realize that the great strength of the show was the ensemble of all of the women and that we get to see even more of the backstories of Shandy and Jen Richards and Candace Kane and Jenny Boylan and her wife. Like I hope that the more that they drive it in an ensemble direction, I think the more successful it will continue uh, to be for people tuning in not just for the educational but for the wonderful personalities uh, that and the diversity of what we were introduced to in it this season. It felt like it's going that way, so hopefully. Um, and in Nod, and these are the important stories and why uh, we cheer shows like I Am Kate for creating awareness. A horrible thing, and I actually watched this happen on Twitter on Monday through uh, my feed. A trans woman named Shady Petoskey 
entered the security area of Orlando International Airport and encountered a series of embarrassing, frightening, and ultimately truly terrible interactions with agents from TSA. Potoski was in Central Florida celebrating her birthday, and then she live-tweeted the experience as it happened through the day. And I'm just going to read the story from uh, s- uh, some of her tweets that I sort of pulled together, uh, because it's genuinely horrifying, and this is the kind of experience that m- most of us take for granted and don't even think about uh, that trans people encounter on a daily basis uh, That there aren't, when there aren't uh, systems in place uh, to validate their existence and to support who they are and them being able to just do simple things like work through airport security just like anyone else. She said, I am being held by the TSA in Orlando because of an an anomaly, my penis, she put in parentheses. I would like any help I can get at the Orlando airport. I have missed my flight. The TSA has left me in a room alone. There is an officer holding the door. TSA agent Bramlett told me to get back in the machine as a man or it was going to be a problem. TSA agents are now saying there are explosive alarms for my hands and the officer's gloves when she gave me a full body pat down. I asked TSA agent Bramlett if he had any training in trans issues. He said, I know what I'm doing. She said, I fly all the time and this has never happened. I really thought the TSA was good about trans issues. The cop asked me what sex I was. I told him I wasn't going to answer that question. I am complying, but come on. They're telling me they have to take my phone. I told them that I want to use this to keep a record of what is happening. A man in a brown suit came and whispered to TSA agent Sean San Roman to make sure I am not taking photos or videos. There are now two police officers, one explosive specialist, and four TSA agents. They're taking my phone for screening. She finally got through. It was about 40 minutes, two full-body pat-downs, fully disassembled luggage, and she missed her flight. A TSA agent is saying she has to leave the airport to get a new boarding pass, and she said please call a supervisor because she didn't want to have to go through the whole process uh, again. So she did finally get through. She did finally get on another flight and get home. But this should be a part of standard TSA training, how to deal uh, with trans people in a way that it respects their identities and respects their process and the ability to to operate through an airport just like anyone else. Um, and it was extremely brave of her to be so open and share the process as it was happening. But I also think for her that was a safety issue if she was concerned of if I'm not telling people what's going on after the fact, they may tell the story differently. Well, I love this story for, for a couple of reasons. First of all, I hated that it happened to her, but I love that she exposed this because what she did was she educated publicly. Yes. And now we're saying, I hope that TSA has, tra- they will. I bet you that her response to this will change the policies. Well, and there are some guidelines that exist in very with the NCTE and various things, but clearly it has not trickled all the way down, um, and it's important uh, that everybody be uh, respected as a person moving through an airport. Like, There's no excuse for that. Yeah. And this is the kind of uh, experiences that many trans people have on a daily basis uh, dealing with bureaucracy and institutions. So it's important to Ross's awareness, and we applaud Shady for being willing to share her story Absolutely. Uh, for what was clearly a traumatic event. And let's go right to the Check it in with Craig! No, let's, do this one. You want me to do That's this That's more one? important. Oh, really? Okay, yes. all right. Well, you know, I love the crazy people, and there's Alaska woman that just went on a crazy... This is the craziest anti-gay rant I think I've ever... Because it makes no sense. I think this woman is certifiable. Her name's Kathleen Ton. She testified at the Anchorage, Alaska City Council meeting on a proposed ordinance to pro- prohibit discrimination based on sexual orientation or gender identity in employment, public accommodation, and housing. Now, try to follow along with this rant. She goes, Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. You are like my trumpet. It's a sound heard around the world. Kathleen Ton. T is in Thomas. O. Oh, in like November, in like November, ton as in a ton of sin, a ton of judgment, a ton of nuclear destruction. Since one of my brethren introduced the King James Bible, since I represent the Lord Jesus Christ, the great I am, I'm going to add to your public document and your public record from the public document of the great I am, starting with, oh my, a tampon. Reminds me of the little girls in the prepubescent get, get period. I'm sorry, I can't. Female girls. Female girls. Mm-hmm. Um, so then she read from the second, uh, second Peter, which not many people read from that. Uh, but there are false prophets among the people, even as there shall be false prophet teachers among you who bring 
to damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that brought them and bring upon themselves swift destruction. For if God spared not the angels, but cast them down to hell and delivered them into chains of darkness and turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemneth them with overthrow, making them an example unto those that after they should live ungodly. Now, since you want to create some ordinance to, you know, circles back, uh -huh. to, order to, to avoid discrimination for members of our community who engage in, I perceive, unhealthy, ungodly behavior, you might want to consider creating an ordinance for one who speaks in tongues. I'm sorry, ma'am. That's all the time you have. <laughs> and that was the best part, <laughs> is that she got cut. Like, she clearly had prepared, but she spent so much time reading from the Bible, she didn't get to say what she wanted to say because it was a three-minute limit. And he was so, he was like, I'm sorry, and that is all your time. Thank you. <laughs> it was just it. He it's was like, really uh -huh. hard to, I'm, I'm just Thanks. trying as I'm reading this, you know, as a good actor, to try to follow her trail, just to try, where is her mind? It's just well, flipping from one thing to another. And I don't think she ever got there. My favorite part was T, and then T is in Thomas O, N is in, like, O didn't need one. You, you know, you it's got it. N is in November, o N is in November. O. Oh, is an oh oh you're ridiculous, <laughs> ma'am. All right, that's our show. Thank you. Where are you so gonna be this? Oh, I'm going to be in uh, Charlotte on Saturday night. You better get your tickets because they are almost sold out for this show. And very excited to go back to Charlotte. They're always good to us there. We're uh, doing a, a great benefit. And uh, with Mr. Leslie Jordan, Miss Caroline Ray. Yay! So, so and if they are, want tickets, where are they? Uh, just go to my Facebook and go under events, and it's it's uh, if you just go to my Facebook page, you can find it there. It has been posted several times, so I, you know, I'm a publicity whore. So and so, thank you guys for listening. But do make sure that you go to either Dell or my Facebook page after the show today. That po the post will stay up. But tell us your ideas about what you think about what we can do on social media to help bring new people to the show, to help get your friends in here with us, and what we could post and share uh, that would make you want to Facebook and tweet about it to help bring new people to our crazy little shindig. Every and Wednesday. revenue in. So thank. Thank you so much for listening to the Dylan Emerson Show. Tony Sweet is up next, then Jasper Cole, and then the amazing Ann Walker. Bye, y'all.